before we get to the episode, exciting news. I have a new podcast, a second podcast. I am the host and producer of the Strandcast, the official podcast for Strand Bookstore in New York City at 12th and Broadway, the coolest independent bookstore. And now there's a podcast every other week featuring long form conversations with authors from different genres. The Strandcast is available on iTunes and Stitcher. Just search for the Strandcast. Links will be in the show notes, of course, and make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And now for the show. Hello there, my dear friend. Welcome to Talk Music Talk with Boys. I am Boys, your podcasting host. Thank you so much for listening, for checking this podcast out. You could be listening to a million other podcasts, literally a million other podcasts, but you chose to listen to this one. So thank you for that. If it is your first time checking it out, Talk Music Talk is a weekly music interview podcast where I have long-form conversations with people connected to music from different genres, different backgrounds, established and emerging singers, singers, songwriters, music therapists, music journalists. And on this episode, I had the great pleasure of speaking to Praveen Thompson band leader, guitarist. We initially connected on Instagram. He shared his forthcoming album with me. It is incredible, amazing. It is called A Thoughtful Collapse. It is out March 27th. In this conversation, we talk about his fulfilling his desire to be a band leader. We talk about what do you do when your expectations don't pan out. We talk about putting his band together, working a day job and the pursuing of the artistic career, and the benefits of a day job. We talk about that. And after the conversation, you're going to hear a song from A Thoughtful Collapse because we talk about that, the making of it during the interview. The song is called Devil at Your Heels. Right after the conversation, here it is without further ado. My interview, my talk, my conversation with Praveen Thompson. Enjoy. I've listened to a few of the interviews, Mm -hmm. like... uh... You interviewed my friend Gaia. Oh, thank you. Okay. A long time ago. Okay. I think that's how I discovered your uh, Instagram. Okay, yeah. And the Antonio Sanchez one was super cool. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that yeah. was a pleasure. Uh, yeah, because that's how we got introduced on, connected on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. going to ask you that. That was the introduction. That was the introduction. Okay. Because I was just checking out, I don't know, I don't know how I got there, but I like mm-hmm. saw it and I just saw, I was like, oh, there's Gaia. Oh. Antonio Sanchez. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, a bunch of people. It was okay. amazing. Yeah. Cool, cool. Very cool. Well, I'm glad to have you on. Yeah. So you, you uh have an album coming out? I do. Yes. Yes. And March twenty seventh is March the drop 27th. date. Yeah, yeah. And the title is A Thoughtful Collapse. A thought. What does that title mean? Um so I guess like I started like after we recorded and I started listening back to uh all the rough mixes, I was just like that phrase just kept coming into my head Mm -hmm. and i thought about like the progression of this record i started writing the music in like 2015 2016 and i've gone through i think a lot of just life changes in the course of that time from like then to releasing it now and a lot of changes in my priorities as like a human being i guess Mm -hmm. like uh like my expectations, like I moved here in 2014 right out of college and you have those expectations of like, this is what my life will be like. Yes, these are my goals. Yes. And these are the things that will make me happy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess like slowly, because change is very slow and incremental, like slowly and I like to say thoughtfully, uh-huh. that <laughs> collapsed. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, life is not going to be this way. Uh-huh. I have to just make changes in my life. And the things that I thought would make me happy are not like what 18 year old Praveen thought. So it was just a lot of like, what are the things that are important Mm -hmm. to me and just how like that process, I I just think there is like abrupt immediate change. I think like you hit like a trauma in your life that like kind of forces you to shift gears, Mm -hmm. but nobody talks about like, just incremental change yeah, yeah. and just how it's just a very slow, it's such a very, it's such a slow process mm-hmm. and you don't know, you just, 
it's a day to day, it's day to day choices. Yeah. And, um, that I feel like a lot of the inspiration behind this album is like kind of like leaning into that. Okay. So yeah. what was a uh, college graduate Praveen thinking life was going to be? Oh, I'm going to be the next big <laughs> jazz guitarist. Okay. Um, and in a few years. Yeah. It's yeah, going that, to take thought, like too. six months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you, the thing is, you hear stuff like that happens where people like, yeah, yeah. yeah so you're like, so well, you're why just not like, me? this can happen. This yeah, is yeah. amazing. I mean, um, it's also like I've, I, I had a good education. I liked where I went. Um, Where'd you go? I went to Jersey City University. Okay. I mean, the best part about it was it was next to New York. So I would just, I just went to New York all the time. So I could study with a lot of people in New York as well. I just think like. We didn't really talk about what is, how to like really create your own like situation and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. The main focus was like how to be a working musician, which was very important. Um, And that means like what, gigging for other people, other acts? Yeah, and also gigging like musicals and like, like nobody talks about that, I feel Mm -hmm. like in college. Um, Which I was lucky in my college, my professors were just like, you're going to teach a lot of guitar. And I was like, will I? And they're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're going to play a lot of musicals. I'm uh-huh. like, will I? Yeah. Okay. That's what I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're going to play in church. And I'm like, will I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they sing this to prepare you for the... The grind the, of it. Okay. Yeah. Which was good. Um, we didn't talk a lot about the more creative aspects of like, how do you release your own record how do you write like like, like it, was, it was it was a it was a very good gear towards like working mm-hmm. which is important but um do they teach you how to be a band leader or is it just working no, for others okay not really mm-hmm. not really i think i there was one master class we had where um i think one of our professors talked about it a lot but um I mean, I have all the notes, and there was a lot of good information, but the music I write, just, it's not geared towards being, like, like, not, it's not even geared towards being, like, a very, like, common denominator for jazz. Mm-hmm. And, like, being a band leader, I think, like, they gear towards, like, oh, being a band leader so you can get gigs that were, like like background music gigs, like that kind of stuff, like, which is cool. And I have friends who lead dope cover bands and like dope wedding bands. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a lot of amazing stuff. And they're like creating jobs for musicians, which is incredible. But I was just like, that wouldn't really make me very Mm -hmm. happy to do that. Even though that would be very financially like stable. Yeah. 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 But, um, when did you realize this, that, Okay, the dream isn't looking like it's supposed to look. Um, I think year, it's we. I think like year like three. I was just like, I need to make it make choices that are just more deliberate. Because I was like in this in between phase, my first two years being here of like, I want to be a, I want to be a side man. I want to be in a lot of people's bands. I'm gonna take every gig, mm-hmm. and. But I'm like, but I also want to be a band leader, which is like requires, honestly, like having more stable income so you can like pay musicians mm-hmm. and like really build something. So I just didn't do either properly. And I had a lot of fails and heartbreaks on both sides yeah. where I'm like, like there are certain gigs that I'm like, okay, cool. All I need to do is practice like 20 hours a day and, <laughs> and I can play this by Friday, which is like, I have to be. I had to be very just more honest about like what kind of guitar player I am. Okay. Like there are just certain things that like are not my strengths and I do not have the time to make them my strengths. Mm-hmm. Um if that makes sense. Yeah. But um and then band leading, I was just like there's just a huge it, it requires a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Anyone who I see who says they're a band leader, I just they I want to give them a hug and buy them a shot <laughs> and just be like I understand. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's not a lot of return yet, but yeah. like 
I can say the entire process, especially when I like really solidified my band, has been incredibly enjoyable. It's helped teach me how to really like be at peace with the process mm-hmm. of it. How did you know you had the right members for your band? What well, did that look like? The drummer in my band I've been playing with since seventh grade. No, wait, not seventh grade. Mm-hmm. Um, ninth or tenth grade. Okay. We went to high school together. Um, he was two years older than me, Paolo Cantarella. And then we went to college together. Okay. And I've just been, it's like, when I wrote the music, I was just like, his sound is, mm. he's the guy. I mean, there are other drummers I love playing with. And in this project, um, my friend Jarrett Walzer also has played a lot of those gigs. And it really came down to a thing of availability, like who is available for this, who is okay. available for this. But um, Paolo, I've been playing with for a very long time. And um, I was just like, set, like he has to be the guy. Um, Yuka Tadano is playing bass. And uh, I met her through uh, the guitarist Allison Yaffe. Mm-hmm. And like, she just like walks in. She like walked into that rehearsal with Allison. And we were all trading music. Like, I wrote a bunch of charts for it. And I had all these like long, like, look like long 16 note lines for upright bass. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I don't know if this is possible. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember like a few doing a few sessions with it and bass players complaining. And then Yuka just was like, I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. She's the one. She did okay. it. <laughs> she's the one. She's yeah. She's amazing. And, uh, the tenor saxophonist, Yuma Uisaka, uh, he's actually my roommate. Mm-hmm. And I think we had one or two sessions and I was just like, this is the guy. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of like, yes, talent and just uh, musicianship, like being able to walk into the rehearsal and kind of do it is great. But also just being a band leader, like in the beginning, like especially when your like budget is zero for mm-hmm. a while, like having friends and people who have your back was super important yeah. to me. Because there were just gigs that I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how we're going to do this. But, like, everyone's been super helpful. And, um, like, we did a tour. Um, we did our first, like, we, like, went up to Canada, played two shows, and came back and did Rockwood. And uh, Yuka helped me out with so many aspects of that tour. And it was just like, you made this happen. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, thank you. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of really, like... They, the three of them, have put so much effort into the music without, like, without worrying about the monetary return of it. And have, like, really shown that they care about the music and they're willing to, like, deal with the trenches with me. And um, that means a lot. Mm -hmm. Because, um, I don't know, there's a thing in New York about, like, getting the best side men possible and hiring up side men and or side women. Yeah. <laughs> side person. That's a weird term. Yeah, it does. It's <laughs> I'm a just side like, person. <laughs> like, how do I, is there a better terminology for uh, that? Like, I, don't I don't know if we've come up with one yet. I don't know. Uh, side X. Side X. I don't side know. X. Now that just sounds like a really bad band name. Side X. <laughs> Google that. I bet there's a band name called Side X. <laughs> We're going to have to edit this out. <laughs> um, there's a thing of like hiring like the best of the best all the time, which like I've tried a few times and it's been a very fascinating experience. But it was also like, like I wanted, I, it makes more sense to me to hire people who care about you mm and care about the music and are able to devote more time, then like the best of the best is great. And they can walk in just to the gig and play it. But that's kind of the value of it. Yeah. Like, cool. I can walk in there and do it and then go home, Mm -hmm. which is, I don't like, I, that's some, there's no fault in that. Like Mm -hmm. I understand that. That's like the New York thing. That's like what everyone talks about in other countries and other parts of the world, like, Oh, you get a New York musician. They can just do it. They can do the thing. And I'm like, and I guess for me, it was just like, I 
need a little more than that mm-hmm. because I'm starting at the bare bones and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you don't want someone to just come in, do their job, and if they, maybe they can't do the next gig because they've got like five other options. Yeah. Then you're starting from scratch again. Yeah, yeah. That's like that is like kind of the jazz band mentality, which. When I wrote this music and the things I've had in mind, um, I really want to like be on that fine line of like, is this jazz? Is this indie rock? Mm-hmm. Is this prog? Like, what can, and just see how long I can be on that gray area yeah. and see where it falls. And it's been cool so far. Like, mm-hmm. I've gotten, I opened up uh, my, we opened for Donnie McCaslin in mm-hmm. uh, Toronto Undergraduate Jazz Festival, yeah, which is super super, oh, which was super super fun. And, um, but we've also gotten like, I've gotten with this record release, um, a lot of the press I've gotten was through like indie blogs and okay. like indie rock blogs. So mm-hmm. it's been very cool to oh. like, see how that works out. Okay. Cause I was curious, like, uh, playing guitar, why did you first start playing guitar? Was it oh. cause you liked all kinds of music and that it may work started well? My brother was so cool when he played guitar uh-huh. and I was, he was like 10 years older than me and okay. I was like, he looks so cool. Oh, oh, how old would you have been? I was eight. Okay. I think I was eight. Um, and it was a really funny experience because my mom loves to save money. Mm-hmm. So she was like, we have a hand-me-down guitar in the basement that's broken. has uh-huh. two strings on it. <laughs> and, oh, you know, we could sign you up for private lessons, but I'm going to sign you up for a night class okay. when you're eight. <laughs> A group night class. So you're around... For an eight-year-old. <laughs> so you're around a bunch of people who are in college. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you totally scared or intimidated? Oh, yeah. I didn't do... I was very confused. Mm-hmm. I was just confused. Because the teacher had no idea what to do with me. He was just like, uh... Here's a chord. Uh-huh. Okay, bye. And it, was, it was very, like... <laughs> it wasn't the best introduction yeah, experience. Yeah. I think I did that for, like a semester or something. Did you learn anything? I learned a, the A minor chord. Okay. That's like all I could play. You got a chord out of it. I got a chord out of it. (laughs) Did your brother like show you stuff or? He showed me stuff a little bit later. He's 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. So like he was already, he's pretty busy, but he would show me stuff here and there. And he would just like, cause that's like a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Difference at that age. Yeah. But, um, it was just funny cause he'd have arguments with my mom just going like, mom, he needs, a new guitar. Mm-hmm. She was like, "Why? It, was just, it has it has strings on it. He can just learn those uh-huh. strings." And she <laughs> was just like, "No, mom. He needs a new one." <laughs> it was really amazing. But uh, we moved to a new town, and I started studying with a jazz guitar player. And I remember I was like hesitant at first because mm-hmm. I was just like, "My first experience playing guitar was pretty awful." Yeah, yeah. What's this going to be like? And I think I was ten when I started studying with Will. Um, Why jazz? Oh, he was just offering lessons. Okay. It had nothing to do with... Um, it was just offering lessons. I think like it was the one of the cheapest lessons mm-hmm. in the area, and my dad was like, going for that guy. Okay. Um, but like the bare beginnings of those lessons were... Um, we worked on... He just taught me chords, and he taught me how to solo over the chords. Like, super basic. Mm-hmm. And I kind of gained a love of like like improvising and um a love of like um making my own songs mm-hmm. i think i would write a lot of super cheesy like i don't know teenager songs like uh-huh. very emo i was okay. super into rock so music. you had lyrics these had lyrics i had lyrics, okay. I had lyrics. <laughs> they're probably really bad uh-huh. probably really depressing i don't know <laughs> Will those Angst come years. out posthumously? <laughs> I, I hope those will never see the light of day. My dad had a binder filled with like, because I would like write poems and type them up and save them on my computer. Yeah. And I would just assume he'd never check them out, but like he printed them all out and gave really? them to me. Okay. And I was just like, oh, I will read this <laughs> like when I'm 30. <laughs> like, I don't want to wanna look at this right now. So did you you picked it up pretty quickly? It came natural to you? Yeah, certain things like mm-hmm. rhythm, um like memorizing scales, memorizing shapes, those came pretty naturally. Reading music came a lot later. Um I think I started reading music when I was in jazz band. 
um, which was like in high school. I don't, mm. I didn't do anything music related in school until I was like 16. Okay. So I'm a late bloomer with a lot of that stuff. And yeah, jazz band was actually the first time I was like exposed to like jazz and I like had the urge to want to learn jazz more traditionally. Um, that's where I met my friend, uh, Paolo, who's mm-hmm. on the, this record. And, um, yeah, I, but before that I was like listening to a lot of metal and rock and, um, blues mm-hmm. and like, I would just get into just general guitar and a lot of bands that my brother exposed me yeah. to. Yeah. Does anyone tell you that jazz, guitar isn't a prominent instrument in jazz? Oh Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People love to remind me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like that, and also just like the Nate. I feel like there are a lot of uh, what's the word for it? Like jazz guitar stereotypes. Like yeah. you walk into a jam session, and everyone's like, "Oh, great!" <laughs> like another one. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. The guitar amp is broken. Sorry. Like, or just uh-huh. they're hiding the amp in a corner. They're like, "Okay, you have to play. You have to answer these three questions." Uh-huh. Or, <laughs> Creates some weird riddle system. I'm like, ah, cool. The, I feel welcomed and loved here. <laughs> that's the jazz guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, in order to play, you mm-hmm. must answer these questions. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so people tell you that. Does that discourage you or make you think how to look at it in a different way? Well, like, I I never thought of myself as a jazz guitar mm-hmm. player. Or wanting to even be that yeah. until I was like eighteen. Okay, and I'm saying this as someone who hates labels. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. No, I feel that. But like um, before that, I was just like, I love improvising. Um, I was I only was exposed to the more modern jazz at that point, mm-hmm. where it's like you're see you're seeing like Nels Klein or like Nierfelder yeah. like on a with a bunch of distortion, just kind of wailing, and I'm mm-hmm. like. That's jazz? Cool. I didn't I didn't work my way like like tradition to modern. I worked my way modern backwards. Okay. Um so I think I was first exposed to like the early like Mark Juliana beat music stuff mm-hmm. where he had guitar players and I was like this is super cool. Um and I like I could do that in my basement. This is cool. This mm-hmm. is accessible. Like I can play four chords. Yeah, yeah. I think I can do this. But um, when I started getting, I I think the record that changed my uh, interest was Miles Smiles. Okay. The great, se- great. Uh, the second grade quintet record. Yeah. Uh, because Paolo was two years older than me, so he came back from college one semester and was just like playing that record like nonstop because <clears throat> he was obsessed with Tony Williams at the time. And I was just like, I, how, when, <laughs> what, mm-hmm. where, huh? So like I, my first main obsessions was that band, like Herbie Hancock. And then I worked my way backwards. Like, like I checked out a lot of Bill Evans and like Wynn Kelly. Mm-hmm. I actually did not check out a lot of jazz guitar okay. until my teacher at, in college was like, that you know they're jazz guitar players. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh-huh. And then I kind of saw like there's like the subgenre of jazz guitar that I I respect a lot now, and especially like there's there's a huge tradition of New Jersey jazz guitar players okay. like What's Vic that? Juris, who just passed away. It was an incredible, like just a huge landmark in that. Like Vic Juris, I studied with Dave Stryker for a little bit. Mm-hmm who's another incredible guitar player, like, coming out of New Jersey. And um, I think Joe Pass passed away in New Jersey. Okay. I think he, like, settled there. Like, there are a lot of guitar players, like, who are coming out of Jersey that was just like, this is something to check out. This is something very yeah, special. Yeah. I'm from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. So it was like, this is something very special to this region. Um, so I did... I, I, I did start checking out jazz guitar in college, and I think I, the guy I fell in love with the most was like uh, Jim Hall, mm-hmm. Jim Hall, and uh, Charlie Christian. Uh, a few West Montgomery records I really, really love, but um, in general, the stuff that inspired me to like really start learning about jazz and learning about the, the tradition was uh, the Second Great Quintet, late 
Chick Corea like mm-hmm. records. Like those were amazing. I still listen to them constantly. Yeah. Which one is the favorite? Um, I love Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. Okay. Um, man, uh, most of the the live that plug nickel. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I have the entire. Like was it like a six disc? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh man, that. I've listened to so many of those. <laughs> oh, it's oh man, I love those. I transcribed a few of Herbie Hancock solos, and I was just like, I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> 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 when do you start realizing for yourself that you can bring in all these different elements of music, into um, your own music, into my own music? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think with this record, yeah. With this record, I think was the most because I released a short EP that felt very like I'm trying to do this modern jazz thing badly, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I didn't feel as like by the time we were like recorded it, but and then we did a CD release show, and I didn't feel as connected with it. And I wasn't sure, like, okay, what's the direction I want to be? And I feel like this record, I'm trying to be these guitar players or mm-hmm. these musicians I look up to, rather than what are the things that are actually, like, my soul, Yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. And, I mean, not to say, like, that uh, that EP is called Identity, and a lot of that does... Like, I've, I've definitely evolved from that point, and it was, it was definitely relevant. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely, like, I'm trying to be something. Okay. When did you realize, like, after you finished recording? Yeah, uh, After the C release show okay. and a few gigs afterwards, I was like, I love these musicians who are on it. I love them as people. I love these songs. They're a good statement about my life at mm-hmm. that time, but I have no urge to play them again. Okay. And maybe that'll change. Maybe I'll like find a different way to look about it. But um, when did that come out? 2014. Okay. Also, I had no idea how to do anything in terms of press. Go I ahead. just like released it, and I was like, maybe I'll make a million dollars. Still waiting on it. Because you're still thinking that. Yeah. That yeah, was a yeah. okay. You're just like that's how it works, right? Uh-huh. So, no. No. What? Okay. So you released that, or you already have the next album in mind, Thoughtful Collapse in mind? Uh, I think I, no, no. Uh, after that, I was just like, how do I make rent? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the U- Using thought. your talent so far. Yeah, just yeah. for the most part. Uh-huh. I'd say the first two and a half years, I freelanced a lot. I was very broke, mm-hmm. but I freelanced, and I'm was like I'm a full time musician. Yeah. And there was like that was my identity. That was like very important to me. But um I think it was like the end of two thousand sixteen I was super burnt out mm-hmm. and like just in a month I quit all of my like steady music income gigs. Yeah. I had a church gig every Sunday. I She's like, I'm sorry, I can't do it anymore. I was teaching like three days a week. I quit all of those and mm-hmm. I like got a job in the farmer's market. Okay. <laughs> working with like a nonprofit bakery. Yeah. Like selling bread. Okay. And there was like a feeling of like shame in doing that. I was mm-hmm. just like, oh man, I'm not a full time musician. I didn't, I failed. I failed the yeah, thing. Yeah. And I just had a lot of anxieties and like just depression when it came to playing. Uh, and I, I like said no to every gig for mm-hmm. like two months. I still did like things that were like collaborative groups, stuff with my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was super fun. And I like, I was like, okay, like maybe I just live the day job life and then play the gigs I want. Um, or maybe, I don't I don't know, yeah. find a secondary career. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Were you going to give up on music? Or? There was a, like a two, three week period. Okay. I never really told anyone except for like one friend, but I was just like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this anymore. Mm-hmm. If it meant uh, having to do the freelance grind and if it meant that, is that why you didn't want to do it? I think my idea of what the freelance grind was at that time was take every single gig, mm-hmm. 20 bucks, 30 bucks, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But um, I think at some point that was the truth. 
And there, at some point, I think in every musician's life is the truth of that. Like, mm-hmm. you have to just learn a lot of things. But um, I think, like, where New York's at real estate-wise, yeah, it is yeah. getting increasingly difficult to do that and think that you can pay all your bills. Mm-hmm. Because it was, like, I don't know. I think when I moved to New York, I had an apartment that was, like, $600, and now I'm paying, like, way more than that yeah. and like in a few short years i noticed that too and i was just uh, told you i just moved yeah, yeah, yeah. moved and i'm like wow it seemed like rents jumped mm-hmm. really quickly in just a span of a few years yeah i mean yeah. i have i have some friends who are their older musicians um and i think when i told them uh my rent in uh my apartment currently they're like mm-hmm. oh man you can find something cheaper then a year later like those same friends were like i guess you can't anymore yeah, yeah. i guess it's done <laughs> I think so. Like maybe the Bronx, but like I'm like I'm not moving to the Bronx. No, no. I like the Bronx. Yeah, I'm not moving there though. Very I feel fun. like it's one of those places. Like uh, you got to get me before I go home if we're gonna do something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I'm not leaving back out. The rest of the night if <laughs> or I, go I might home. just not leave ever. <laughs> There's so much good food in the Bronx that maybe I'll just stay just there. Stay here. <laughs> So you took the job uh, farmer's market out of security because you need to, to pay rent. And to do something else. Yeah, because you're kind of burned out. I was burnt out. Yeah. But, like, I also still, like, it's really funny. Those first few months, anyone I met there, they, within five seconds of talking to me, they knew I was a musician. Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, I'm a musician. Yeah, you know, I'm just doing this. <laughs> Which, like, I was like, this is so much of my insecurity, like, pouring out. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Which is funny, because now I'm back to doing music Mm full-time. Like, I have a great teaching job. Um, I'm playing a lot of cool gigs that I really like and projects that are growing. Mm -hmm. That was what was really, like, bumming me out, is that when I was, like, freelancing the way I was before, like, I would be in so many bands doing, like, okay, this one restaurant gig, this thing here. Mm -hmm. And none of them would be growing because everyone's, like, fighting fires. Yeah, They're like, okay, we just got to do these gigs and oh, you're not available? Okay, this person. Like, mm-hmm. there's no, like, sense of, like, okay, this is, Praveen's the sound for this. It's yeah, just, like, yeah. he does the guitar thing. I'm going to use him. Oh, he can't make it. Oh, accidentally, I double booked four people. It's, like, mm-hmm. it just feels like, like, you're just fighting fires yeah, constantly, yeah. and that's the ba- that band leader mentality when you're, like, booking a lot of these restaurant mm-hmm. gigs or a lot of these, like, wedding gigs and I was like, this is stressing me out. Yeah. And I'm not even the band leader in these. <laughs> well, is it stressful too if you're playing restaurants and stuff and people. Yeah. It's a weird vibe. Or treating you like kind of like a jukebox or yeah. background noise. Or like sometimes I remember feeling like this in some restaurants. It's just like there are customers there and they're like, we really don't want you to be here. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I don't really want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to stop, <laughs> but I guess I have to be here. Yeah. And then, like, the restaurant owner's like, you're great, but can you play quieter? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I haven't started yet. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can get quieter. I'm just like, you're oh. disturbing people's meals. <laughs> I'm like, but you hired me. I don't. <laughs> That's crazy. Good. So, how do you get from being a farmer's market to taking gigs that you like or enjoy? You know, how do you transition out of that? How so, long were you in the farmer's market? I worked in the market for like um, like a year and a half, mm. I think. I still do market shifts here yeah, and there because, yeah. like, my entire social circle is that now. Yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. I think it's very important that, like, if you are a musician, yes, network, meet a lot of musicians, mm-hmm. be friends with musicians. Also, meet other people. Yeah. There's yeah. so many cool people in New York. Mm-hmm. There's so many cool people who are doing very different things than you, who like will appreciate what you do, and you will appreciate what they do, and you'll have this more... Not to say that doesn't happen in music, that happens yeah. a lot, but you're also constantly in the same field. Mm. It's just good to... like. Uh, I don't know, last night I was hanging out with a, a, what's the term, sous chef? Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like so much fun. I learned so much. But um, I just like, I think that's really important. And I think some, like I run to some friends who are like, yeah, I haven't, I guess I, I don't have a lot of friends. I'm like, but you've been here five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
what did you do wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, like, what was interesting with the farmer's market was because there was a period I was like, I don't know if I want to play music anymore. That really only lasted a few weeks, and then I was just like, okay, like, I need to play music because mm-hmm. that's how life works. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I just, I have to do this thing. I consider music sometimes like a beautiful curse. Mm-hmm. Like, and I know a lot of my friends have felt the same way when I've like said it that way. It's just like, I have to do this thing. It makes no sense. I'm creating things no one asked for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not living if I don't But do I got to do it. Yeah, and it's yeah. a really beautiful, it's a beautiful curse to me. I'm mm-hmm. like, um, but I was able to pivot my career because there were people I wanted to work with. But because I was so financially stressed, I was just like, I can only work with you for this much money. Yeah. And I can only do this amount of things. And there was this one singer who I played his music once, and it was so much fun. This indie rock singer. And I'm working with him a lot now. Like mm-hmm. um, Taylor Bradshaw, he's releasing his record. I'm dropping, I'm just like <laughs> dropping everyone's name here. <laughs> everyone share this. But, um,. I just remember, like, the first time we played, I was just like, listen, I'm really, like, financially bogged down. The most I can do is, like, a rehearsal and play the gig. Mm -hmm. Which he was just like, okay, cool, but, like, I want old music memorized. And I was like, I probably can't do that in one rehearsal. And I want the vibe. I want it to feel, like, relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I love him as a person, and I loved his music, but I was just, it was, like, a little heartbreaking. I was like, I just don't have the time. And I just, I just can't do it. And then when I worked at the farmer's market, I was just like, well, this is handling most of the income I need. Okay. And he came out to like a party we had at our apartment. I hadn't seen him in months. And um, I was just like, dude, if you're still looking for a guitar player, <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. Let's yeah. just make it happen. And He's gone to town. Like he has his album release coming out, and he was a very positive person. And um, I, that happened basically with like five or six different people. So I'm doing less work. Yeah. But all of the projects I'm in are like growing, and I'm the sound for that project, okay. which is like a very cool place to be. Yeah, yeah. And there's just more of there's just more friendliness mm-hmm. and like. That's just, I worked with, I've always dealt with a lot of friendly and great yeah. people, but there's like more of this, like, what do you think? Like there's mm-hmm. more collaborative, Okay, which Very, I didn't realize how enjoyable that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like through the farmer's market, I was able to kind of pivot my career more in that direction. Um, and I did that until like, I think this last summer I was just like, okay, I'm kind of done selling things to people. Yeah. This is exhausting. <laughs> And uh, I've been teaching a lot of guitar Mm -hmm. and uh, playing a lot of gigs with Taylor with uh, a few other Mm singer-songwriters that are great to work with and some, like some, still some jazz here and there, but it's not like the primary part of my career at this point. And when did you start planning a Thoughtful Collapse or the album that would become that? Because you didn't have the title yet. Yeah, yeah. I started planning that um, 2018. I was just like... I'm. I just got to do this, mm-hmm. cause like even I started the market thing, and I was like, I still love playing with these guys, and like I think we need to like. I just want to make a plan to record it. I yeah. recorded it the summer of 2018, and um, I was just like, I I want to record it and just see what happens, and I didn't have the finances to mix and master. But, um, yeah, I was just very passionate about it and, like, I really thought a lot about what it meant to me, what each song meant to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, like, like, kind of created, like, okay, this is, like, the philosophy of the record and I really want to get it out there because I think it's important. So I started playing, I recorded at Ponderosa Studio in New Jersey, uh, September 2018. And, um, actually, like, I, uh, it got mixed by uh, Kieran Kelly Mm -hmm. at The Buddy Project. That guy did an amazing job and really was super into it, which was like, like everyone, like 
in that process, I really realized like, okay, band leader. Yeah. Yeah. And you have your band. I'm like, okay, cool. Four people, four people is the record. No, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) any project that you do, you, I think it's important to realize it's like 15 to 20 people Mm -hmm. have been a part of it in some way, shape or form. And that's amazing. You've created like such an incredible community just because of this thing. And you'd be so surprised with how many people like, oh, I really like your thing. Can I just help you? How yeah, can I yeah. help you? Isn't that crazy? Dude? It's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. And like at first you're just like, no, what? <laughs> what do you want? Mm. Who are you? Get out of here. Yeah. But then like <laughs> the jaded New Yorker comes out. Uh-huh. But then like um, you really realize like a lot of people want to offer their services and help and like help you create something. Mm. See, and, I was uh, telling yeah. somebody who, they're a DJ, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They want to be a DJ and to release their project. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, I'm not going to be able to get these people. I only have like minimal people on social media. I'm mm-hmm. like, people will want to work with you if they think something's cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're going to get people like, well, you don't have the numbers. I'm not. Well, yeah. fine. You don't want them. Yeah, exactly. But there's going to be great people who will want to work yeah. with you and it won't matter what your numbers are. They just think, oh, you know, I think it's cool. I, I want to yeah. be attached to that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think... Yeah, I have like I feel like I have found a team of literally twenty something people, yeah, yeah. and a, a lot of them are fans who like come out to shows and just share it. Like, like I remember I because we have a gig upstate at a uh, Quinn's in Beacon, and I just made the Facebook event, and that's all I did. I made the Facebook event and like went made dinner, and I was like, "Cool, I'll invite people." Mm-hmm. Come back. I'm like a friend of mine already invited like 15 of her friends yeah, yeah. she's like oh yeah i grew up up there like i know these people i'm like oh okay i'm just like who are these strangers <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah yeah just like you just little things like that mm-hmm. like help a long way and i think it's important to like realize that oh like there's a lot of people who are helping you out like i think another friend of mine i feel like this podcast is just me shouting yeah. out <laughs> but i have to i love my friends yeah, like yeah. My friend Will Sapinero has done so much work for me in the last several years and has just been such a great friend through that. He's a prog metal bass player. Okay. Like, uh, I met him in school. He's in, like, this crazy metal band called Valence. It was just very... He's been, like, he's helped me with logos. He's mm-hmm. made posters. He's done so much good work. And, uh, yeah, you don't realize how many people got your back and I think, I mean, it's super important to also pay that forward. Like, yeah. I've helped so many people move. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the biggest things you can do for someone in New York. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, yeah. So you like, you know, but I think it just starts with the decision, like, okay, yeah. I'm going to do what I really want to do. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel good. And you yeah. attract all those people. Yeah. In yeah, the, in that pathway. and they want to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the biggest part of this uh, record, especially I did an Indiegogo to finish yeah. it. The biggest part was just realizing who is my community, who is my team, and how can I nurture them and vi- like how to create this relationship of like, oh, I'm helping you out because I love you. Mm-hmm. Like the empathy of that and the understanding of that. Not necessarily like scratch my back, I scratch yours. Yeah. I'm like, that's like, yeah, that happens. Yeah. But it's also just like, I also believe in you and I want to get that across and vice versa. And like, that's kind of what I've created also mm-hmm. as a side person in a lot of these people's bands. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. cool, I believe in your project. I want to help with you as much as I can. And um, yeah, I think starting from that place is like, whereas before, um, the farmer's market, I was just like, I just got to make a lot of money somehow by magic. (laughs) (laughs) Let me be in a million people's Uh bands. And like, just the honesty of like, okay, this is where I'm at as a guitar player. Um, I could turn that around and I guess focus more on these things, Mm -hmm. but I really want to write music. I want to lead a band. I want to be in projects that like require my sound rather than like force myself in a box that yeah. I don't really like. And you're doing it, dude. Yay. Yeah, you're doing it. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. 
<laughs> so the album's coming out in March. And March 27th. So you're gearing up for that. Mm-hmm. And we have a CD release uh, March 29th. Yes. Stacked bill with uh, Sivan Arbel and uh, a new band called Dove's Peak okay. with uh, Russell Cranes and Mei Chang. Okay. Where's yeah. this going to be at? Arlene's Grocery. Okay. Yeah. Great place. Great place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where's the best place for people to reach you, connect online? I think the best thing, the thing I'm good at the most right now uh-huh. is Instagram. Okay. So that was it, the at sign, yeah. Praveen Thompson. Okay. And yeah. uh, they can pre-order the album on Bandcamp or where's it at? Ooh, yes. Okay. Or by the time this airs? Yeah. Okay. They can do that. You can save it on Spotify. I have to figure that stuff out okay. soon. But yeah. There will be pre-orders and okay. all those People are smart. They'll figure it yeah. out. Yeah, they'll find their way. Well, I'll yeah. put links in the show notes. For awesome. That. This was a pleasure. Thank I'm you. Glad we got to do this. We yeah, made man. it happen. Yeah. This went great. I had a good time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
And that was Devil at Your Heels from A Thoughtful Collapse by Praveen Thompson. The album is out March 27th. Link in the show notes, of course. He is online. Instagram, Praveen Thompson. So go there and follow him. I am online also several places. Talk Music Talk. Dot com for more podcast information and to stream every single episode. I am also on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at This Is Boys. Some special requests for you. Please subscribe to the podcast. You can do so on Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, pretty much everywhere. Just search for Talk Music Talk with Boys. And when you are there, please leave a five-star rating and our review because through some special chemistry, the more people that leave reviews and ratings, it increases your ranking and exposes you to new people. So I would like that to happen. So thank you in advance. There is also a Talk Music Talk app. It is free wherever you like to get your apps. Again, just search for Talk Music Talk with Boys. And don't forget my other podcast, the Strandcast, the official podcast of Strand Bookstore, 12th and Broadway, New York City. Link in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, and there will be a next time. This one's for you, Liz. (laughs) 